Harvest Right has come out with a new program. This is going to be version number 24. And 24 has some interesting changes. And what Harvest Right is claiming, version 24 is going to resolve a lot of vacuum issues. Normally, with all the other versions of the software, you have to get down to 500 to 600 millitor to freeze dry successfully. But what Harvest Ride is doing, the machine is going to measure what the lowest vacuum is possible and then we'll set the program around that, although it's going to be a little bit longer. So we're going to put this new software to a test. I currently have 23 in my machine and we're going to compare 23 to 24 and the medium we're going to use for that is we're going to freeze dry a whole bunch of milk. So we're going to freeze dry one gallon with version 23 and we're going to do one gallon of milk with version 24. Then we're going to be doing a batch of milk with an intentional vacuum leak in my freeze dryer. We're going to compare all three of those batches and see how they come out. So here we go. I have my milk in the freezer and I'm ready to do the third batch. Now the way I'm testing this is I'm, I did a gallon of milk under program 23 and then I did a gallon of milk under program 24 and this is going to be my third batch of one gallon of milk under version 24 but this time the wrinkle we're going to do is I'm going to create a vacuum leak uh, during this batch cycle to see if the new program will adjust and freeze dry my uh, milk with a vacuum leak. In the past cycles, I've been able to get down to 150 millitor. So on this cycle, I'm gonna to try to stay somewhere around 2,500 millitor. Right down here, I have my drain hose. And what I did is I plugged my drain hose with a smooth bolt and a clamp. And I have a push pin in the side of my hose. So when this goes into vacuum freezing, I'm going to remove the push pin and that should give me a vacuum leak sufficient to probably stay somewhere around 2,500 millitor. But we're at 823 millitor and dropping. So I'm going to go back here and release, open up this valve. Okay, that back valve is open. We're gonna remove the pin. Okay, the pin is removed. And our vacuum is going up to 851, 866, 882. I'm hoping this will stay below 2500. I'm hoping that the CFM of the vacuum pump will keep up with my leak. We're going to take a look at the data from the Harvest Right freeze dryer. This is version 24 and the relationship between vacuum pressure up above noted in this red graph to the shelf temperature below noted by the blue graph. We're going to clip a segment of this graph and explain it into greater detail. Before we begin, we got to explain a little bit about the inverse relationship with vacuum pressure. When vacuum pressure increases, the graph actually goes down to around, say, 500 millitor. When the vacuum pressure decreases, it will actually travel up to around 600 millitor. So this wave sign kind of goes between 500 millitor on the bottom up to 600 millitor on the top and then goes up and down and up and down. Down here with the temperature, it also does the same. This is the shelf temperature, and it goes from being a cold shelf up to a warm shelf, back down to cold. And as this goes up and down, the vacuum up here also corresponds to the temperature of the shelf. On my Harvest Right freeze dryer, my shelf temperature is set at 130 degrees. So the temperature of the shelf will go from cold up to 130 degrees, and once it hits that point, it will then drop back down to a colder temperature. And this will continue throughout the cycle. 
what triggers the shelf temperature is the upper and lower vacuum limit. When, a, when the vacuum reaches around 600 millitor, it will tell the shelves to turn off. So at this point, we're at 600 millitor, and the program will tell the shelves to turn off until the shelves will start to cool down. When the vacuum reaches 500 millitor, the maximum amount that we need, the shelf temperature will turn on and will go from a cooler shelf up to 130 degrees. As the shelves warm up, it will start to warm the food, which is frozen. The moisture in the food will begin to heat up also. And rather than melting, the ice within the food will go from a solid directly to a gas known as sublimation. As the food gives off the gas, it will decrease the vacuum inside the chamber. So instead of being at 500 millitor, the extra vapor inside the chamber will decrease the vacuum and will start to fall down to around 600 millitor. Depending on the program, when it reaches this point, the heaters will turn off. So it will go from 130 degrees and will start to cool off. As the heaters cool off, there is less ice is being melted or sublimated and there'll be less gas in the chamber. And so the vacuum will start to pick up and will build itself back up to 500 millitor. As the gas floats around inside the chamber and touches the chamber wall, it will freeze to the chamber wall and become a solid. As this happens, there will be a decrease in water vapor and an increase of vacuum within the chamber. As the vacuum reaches 500 millitor, the heaters will turn on again. So it'll just go through the cycle of the heaters turning off and on, off and on, and the vacuum decreasing and increasing, decreasing and increasing until there's no more moisture in the food to sublimate. At that point, the vacuum drying is completed and the system will go into final dry. This is the data for all three batches. The blue line is version 24, the red line is version 23, and the black line is version 24 with a vacuum leak. Now under normal circumstances, a normal vacuum cycle, the vacuum will go between basically 500 millitors and up here around 600 millitors, and it just kind of follows this little waveform going up and down and up and down and it goes up and down depending on the temperature down below. As the temperature of the shelves warm up, then the vacuum will decrease and actually go higher. When the shelves turn off the heat and come back down, then the vacuum builds and will come down lower. I hope that makes sense. So when everything is happy, everything just kind of goes up and down and up and down through the drying cycle. And you can see that version 23 and 24, the red and the blue line are pretty much identical going all the way through. Now, version 24 with my vacuum leak wasn't as much of the vacuum leak as I was hoping for, but you can see up here that the vacuum leak raised this entire line up from between 500 and 600 up to about 650, almost up to 800. Even with this vacuum leak that I had, the program compensated and continued to run a normal cycle, making the adjustments as necessary until it finished. Vacuum leak actually finished before the other two batches finished. So the new version 24 does what it said. Now, if this would have been version 23 with a vacuum leak, I would have got the inadequate vacuum message because of this high amount of uh, vacuum with the vacuum leak I had. So. According to Harvest Right, you can have a vacuum leak that can go as high as 1500 millitor, and this, this is the line right up here. So you can have a vacuum leak that is quite significant, and as long as it doesn't, doesn't pass 1500 millitor, it will compensate for it and finish the batch without any problem. The, the batch will take a little bit longer to perform, but you shouldn't be getting the inadequate vacuum message. We're going to do it with apples, and we're going to see how well version 24 does with apples 
with a vacuum leak. My next experiment is to run version 24 with sliced apples for the vacuum leak. Now, when I ran it with the milk, I just got a pin and basically poked a pinhole in my vacuum line. And that got me a vacuum leak that got me up around, oh, about 650, about 750 millitor. Well, I'm trying to get as close to 1500 to that threshold as possible. So I have my regular ball valve right here, but then I put in a needle valve. I can close my ball valve a little bit and just crack it open just a hair. And then I can adjust the needle valve by just a hair. I might be able to cause a larger vacuum leak that will keep me near 1500 millitor without going over. So we'll have to see how this works. I have all the apples ready to go in. And so we'll go ahead and crank this up right now. This is in a test mode. I'm running the vacuum pump only, and it seems to be working. But once we introduce the freezer element into it, that's gonna change the dynamic of things. So here we go. Here's, here's the regular version 24 on this side, and here's the uh, vacuum leak version of 24. So you can see the quality is quite different. Nice and smooth, wrinkled. And so I wanted to make sure I didn't do something weird with my experiment. So I did the same experiment, but instead of just using apples, I got a large variety of different foods. So this time I prepared uh, multiple different foods and most of these, any of the fruits that were uh, known to, to oxidize in the brown were all dipped in fruit fresh one teaspoon per cup. So I have my strawberries and I have my apples. And these, this is all fresh fruit. This has not gone through the freeze dryer yet. So I got strawberries, apples, and I have my bananas. And I have cheese. I have a piece of uh, ham sliced meat, avocados, which were in fruit fresh, and tomatoes, and mushrooms string beans, corn, peas, onions, and sliced potatoes, which were also in fruit fresh. So all this went into the Hawker's Wright freeze dryer uh, under version number 24. And this time I was going to see if I could make another substantial leak in vacuum to see how the, the quality would come out with this arrangement or variety of food. This is the first tray of assorted foods that I did and it was pretty interesting to see what happened. Now this batch was just a little bit under five, uh, 1500 millitor and you can tell from the quality of some of the food. Uh, normally when I do my batch and it goes down to 150 millitor well below 500 not a problem, but there are some really interesting quality problems. For example, on these avocados, they are sunken in. They almost look like a human ear, but instead of being nice and flat, the centers are sunken in on almost every one of these. And I've never seen this happen before. And that's probably because of the uh, high vacuum. And I'm, a high vacuum is like, opposite of what I'm trying to express, if that makes sense. So low vacuum being under 500 millitor, high vacuum being 1500. But anyway, uh, the avocados are just really sunken. Uh, the tomatoes, tomatoes don't look bad. They look kind of normal. The cheese tastes okay. This is a piece of luncheon meat. It was ham. And so there's some uh, fat marbling in here, but it looked like it came out pretty decent. Not bad for the ham. Let's go on to the next tray. So on this tray, we have mushrooms, string beans, and corn. And there are a lot of quality issues here. Uh, the string beans are kind of, have like this wrinkled texture. And once again, I don't recall this. When I would do my normal loads, that wrinkling did not appear. The corn also has some quality issues. The uh, insides 
are really like hollowed out and on regular freeze-dried corn that does not happen so the corn has some quality issues the mushrooms everything kind of has this wrinkled sunken in appearance and under normal conditions when my, I can get down below 500 millitor this does not happen this is my peas onions and potatoes the potatoes came out pretty decent no problems there there is some cracking on some of my potatoes I've never seen happen before uh, the peas peas look like peas except a lot of the shells are split I mean they almost look like split peas almost all the shells have a split on them like the inside is trying to bust out so that's interesting with the peas uh, onions don't seem to have any problem they look pretty normal but once again there's some fine wrinkling on the onions on the potatoes just a little bit of wrinkling on the potatoes next tray strawberries apples and bananas these apples also soaked in fruit fresh came out to be pretty good but once again there's this intense wrinkling effect going across the apples let's see the strawberries strawberries also have the sunken in appearance that my normal strawberries do not have the bananas have an interesting color to them they have almost a, a pinkish tint in the center of my bananas and they also appear to be sunken in uh, sampling all this food it tastes just fine there's no taste difference between the uh, 500 millitor food and the 1500 millitor food it's just the appearance so I think because we ran longer at a at 1500 millitor versus 500 millitor I think that kind of made everything wrinkly but it tastes just fine so if you do have a vacuum leak in your uh, freeze dryer and as long as you're down below 1500 millitor you can still do a, success, a successful batch it's going to come out a little bit kind of weird the taste is just fine though until you can repair your freeze dryer you can still go along and uh, freeze dry up to 1500 millitor without a problem it's just cosmetic and that's it taste is just fine this was an interesting experiment trying to nudge my uh, vacuum up between 500 up to 1500 and trying to maintain it that way but my next batches will be back down to where they should be but version 24 works out really well the interesting the most interesting thing about 24 as I was trying to increase or decrease the vacuum the program was like jumping in and trying to correct it as I was trying to screw it up so that was very interesting but anyway I learned something on this and I hope you did too uh, if you have any comments please put them down below and I'd like to thank you for your time please subscribe and go forth and freeze dry the world